the last module in this lecture is uh, on all the other steps that you can do in scripting with BCI Lab. It's not too many, as you probably already saw. So uh, everything except for approach definition. So usually, uh, as I already explained in my demo, um, what you typically do is to create a new BCI model is you load some data, like here, raw equals IO load set and some data set. Now we have data. Then you define your approach like we just said. Here I say I want to spec CSP paradigm and then maybe some arguments. And now you're done um, with that. And now you want to train your model. And the function for that is the BCI train function, BCI underscore train. Um, so that is equivalent to the user interface dialog that you get when you click train your model. It takes your data. It takes your approach. Its name value pair is here, as you see. And you can go on and override more stuff. And what you probably always want to override is this target marker specification. Okay, That's documented in BCI train, how that works, um, to explain to the toolbox which markers are important and to what labels they map. So uh, this is just a summary of what the function here takes. Um, so it has these three inputs, data approach, and the marker specification, it has three outputs. The first one is the overall loss estimate for whatever loss metric you use. If you use misclassification rate, it would be the misclassification rate and so on. It's just a single number. The next one is the model structure. And the third one is any statistics that it happened to cough up um, about how well the model is probably going to work. So this is more comprehensive than just a loss estimate. It's going to be um, things like uh, standard deviation of the misclassification rate over all folds and so on, over all folds of the cross validation. Uh, so in other words, it, it doesn't give you just a model, but it also gives you this estimate of how well it's probably going to work. You can turn that off if that's, if that's somehow running for too long. The um, visualization function is so easy. I just cover this with one example. If you have a model that you just calculated, say using BCI train, stick it into BCI visualize, and it'll just print the, the model graph and so on. Most visualizers are currently rather simple, but uh, for sure, uh, that part is up to the paradigm, ultimately. If you have a CSP model, the CSP paradigm is the thing that is responsible for drawing it. And uh, you know some paradigms may not even have a visualizer or, or so. And others may have really complicated visualizers, like SIFT, for example. So the, the other big use case is you have calibrated your model. You have visualized it. You, you have a figure for your paper. You want to, say, apply this offline to some new data. That's the function called BCI underscore predict. So these are the various um, sort of tasks that you can do with, with the toolbox, right? Like I said um, earlier, the various pipeline steps that you can run. So what BCI predict does is you give it some data set and a model. And what it will do is the model describes um, you know, how to extract features and all that. It describes how to preprocess the data. It also contains a description of what markers were relevant during training. And by default, it'll just extract epochs around the same markers in the data and the same marker labels and, as you did during training and calculate basically the, the loss estimate for, for what it predicted for each of these markers. So say if the markers S1 and S2 were used for training this, It'll uh, take your data set, it'll extract an epoch around every S1 and S2 marker, and it'll predict the, um, what the BCI thinks was the condition. And then it'll just compare that to what the marker said the condition should have been. So just marker says it was plus 1 or minus 1. Uh, and then it'll just compare the output of the module and calculate the loss again. Uh, it'll also give you the raw outputs, and it'll give you also the kinds of statistics that you get from BCI train. So that's sort of the other thing that can go into papers. And the last uh, thing that you can do offline is maybe you want to classify not just certain markers or so. Maybe you don't even have markers. Maybe you just want to generate the time course of BCI outputs, the estimated condition or class label or continuous value or so for the whole time series. And the function that does this is called BCI annotate. It basically annotates the data with, with the estimated output of the brain computer interface. And so you give it a data set, a model, and it'll give you a new data set with a few extra channels which encode this output. 
to, to do anything in real time, you will want to use the real time plugins, um, which are online readers and online writers. So to, to read stuff, it can be as simple as writing run underscore read biosemi or so. It doesn't even have parameters. All it'll do is it'll check whether there's an amplifier plugged in. It'll um, start a stream in the background, which streams from this. And then you can go on and apply models to that. Or here's a useful example. This is playing back a data set. It's, it's really practical, of course, if you want to do sort of pseudo online tests to check if it's fast enough or if it crashes or something like that. It takes, um, uh, primarily it takes a data set that you want to play back. And then it also allows you to name the stream um, that it generates sort of in the workspace and that it updates. A stream is, you know, kind of a buffer. To, um, to process things online, given some stream that's updated in the background, you, there's these online writer plugins, and they also start with run underscore and then write. There's a few of them for TCP and OSC and various protocols. And also this very simple one just to draw a visualization. We saw this from the GUI. It takes a model, uh, or actually the name of the model that you should utilize in the workspace, name of a variable. You can also put the structure in here yourself, though. And it wants the name of the stream variable in the workspace that it should read from. And then you can go on and, uh, and pass in other arguments. So basically, uh, here with the previous slide, you say, I want to call my biosemi stream, whatever, something, or my data set stream, my stream. And you got your model from BCI train as a variable. So you have two variables there. And here you just say which these variables are. And then it'll just run stuff online and send it somewhere. Uh, there's usable defaults, by the way. So I think it by default assumes last stream and last model, and the other functions happen to also call their outputs last stream and last model. But OK. Uh, there is this batch analysis um, function, which is a um, behemoth of uh, features, in a sense. I, I don't think I have too much info on, on this here on the slides. There's just too much detail. But it's very well documented. And you can use this to test one approach on multiple data sets, multiple approaches on multiple data sets, and so on. Um, it can not just train and do cross validations, but it can also predict uh, using BCA predict and so on. So it really wraps all the other functions and interfaces in one. And the last trick that you can apply is this conundrum of the parameter search. <laughs> so uh, I've in many occasions said there you, some methods have tunable parameters, like a lambda or so. And and uh, you don't in advance know which value to use. You basically want the toolbox to search over all possibilities and find the right one using cross validation and so on. Uh, there's a relatively simple syntax where you can directly in in an approach definition say um, this parameter say pattern pairs. I don't want to use a number here like five. I want to search over multiple posi possibilities, or I want to have the toolbox search over multiple possibilities. And it's just a search clause. You say search, and then you can list all the possibilities, basically. You can also pass in a salary. So um, that is just a declaration where you say, I don't know this value precisely, but I know it's either this, this, or that. Just find out which one works best. And of course, you can use this in multiple places, and then it will search over all combinations of these parameters, which can be pretty slow if you, if you really did that uh, you know, and hoped to finish in, <laughs> in five minutes or something like that. And so um, that is. Uh, actually, already s sort of the most advanced feature in this um, in the whole scripting business, and it basically concludes this brief overview of how to do scripting in the toolbox.